you know, just before you hopped here, I said the, the same thing earlier. I was like, uh, I believe the goal of humanity is to uh, be able to reach to the point where technology is able to help reveal the spiritual. Uh, hopefully humanity keeps, I mean, considers the spiritual more than the materialistic side of it, of course. So as a psychic for 13 years, one thing I've noticed about humanity is we don't even, like most people still think that a spirit is something only the gifted possess. But it's, you know, it's it's built in uh, from the time from birth to death and even after. And that was another thing, like in all of my like studies and like speaking to the dead about life after death and all this kind of stuff, it's like, I got this, I, it, it dawned on me that we're only alive for 80 years. We're in spirit form for eternity. And I, I, it just hit me that everybody that's ever told me, Taylor, you need to come back to reality, can kiss my ass because reality isn't in this life in terms of time. Reality doesn't start until after this life. So that's a good one to keep in your uh in your pocket there, Parsi, and, and don't forget the Tao Te Ching is a really good source of like flow state, especially when it comes to spiritual topics. You can just pe kind of be like, yeah, that don't, doesn't bother me. And that's the thing, flow state is the state in which nothing bothers you, you know? Yo, I put the target up top, I revealed it. Um, some interesting submissions. I'll post some more too. Um, feel free, anybody who did the submission for remote viewing or tried it, to come up and talk about your feedback. A lot of times we talk about in the second half of the space people's experiences with it. So, um, still loving the discussion, guys. Everybody, feel free to jump up and join it. Um, we're just kind of shooting the shit. But thanks, people. I drew dice. I was in the wrong mood, I guess, eh? There were some good ones with, like, splashes. <laughs> I guess, uh, yo, I'm not going to lie, uh, Daz Smith, who I had in the space earlier, who I consider a really good remote viewer, uh, asked me a question, and, man, I'm still racking my brain around it. He basically asked, it, are people remote viewing the actual picture or the scene within the picture. <laughs> I'm like, damn, fuck. Uh, both, yes. <laughs> That's why I can never get the... That's why I can never get them. I'm like, am I... What What am I remote viewing? Are you remote exactly? viewing that like snapshot of the fish? It? Or like the whole scene of like being in the water and the fish jumping out? And the, I, don't, I feel like it would be both, you know? It would be like sort of like you're getting a sense well, it's, of it. It's, well, it's more of an active clairvoyance, really. Um... So, I mean, you would ask sort of your third eye, like, what do you see, rather than, you know, projecting to the location, which, which is what I think implies remote viewing. It's like, I don't see that as remote viewing, just uh, uh, trying to see a picture. It's, it's more like uh, psychometry I, to me. And because um, like remote viewing really is like I go to a location and it's like, I don't know the mindset of the inside of that picture, you know? I don't know if that makes sense. When you remote view, you're supposed to get the overall mindset of the location. Just saying that. I like the cross between when people talk about remote viewing and then interacting with non-human intelligence. I don't know if there's something there, but it does seem like there is based off of the top remote viewers. Well, yeah, if, uh, if you can remote view anywhere on Earth, you can remote view anywhere in the universe. So anywhere on another planet. And chances are, if you're remote viewing astral traveling, using to like... Part of your mind, like I said, is like probably always at, even out in space. So like that part of you that can do telepathy, they can speak to. Like you can't help hearing them in your mind. Ask them their name. You know, what do you want? Um, I, 
too often, I think, that pe and people blame the shadow beings, and they're talking about how they always come at the most vulnerable time. But the fact is, you're, you're, everybody says it's sleep paralysis, but there's no way you can, like, jerk and hit yourself because there's somebody there in sleep paralysis. So it seems like a more safe way to communicate with someone, and they're, taking, they're just taking it in the wrong direction. I could be wrong. Do you think, uh, this is something I think about often, do you think the sleep paralysis, hat man type of experiences are actual entities or like part of our own subconscious? I cannot speak to either way on that. I can tell you that, you know, as long as there are good advanced beings, there have got to be bad ones somewhere. Uh, so I, I, I've never really met like a hat man or anything. I, I don't know. I'm maybe I'm just like coddled or uh, what? What do you call it? Sheltered. I've never been attacked by like some evil entity. I, I'm just I don't know what it is. Yeah. So I don't know what they are. You know, I had a pretty crazy experience. I've had some... So, since I started having this implicit knowledge, or what was it that you said it? Uh, Claire Bruins. Forgot how was it that you, you named it. it. Claire Cog. Cla that's difficult to pronounce. <laughs> My main language is Spanish. But since I started having this visions and, visions and stuff about like this implicit knowledge, about the soul, a reincarnation, I... I started seeing this, uh, I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I see these things floating. They have a bunch of eyes sometimes or sometimes they have like different forms. And then uh, there was this one thing which I talked to or it talked to me more likely. I asked a question and then it responded. What did it look like? It kind of looked... Was it covered in eyes? No, it, it didn't. It didn't even have... This one didn't have eyes. The other ones did. This one was like in the shape of two triangles put together, uh, and it was it just was bright. Like imagine somehow the edges were super dark, but in the middle was so bright and white. And that one was the one that uh, spoke to me. Uh, but the other ones, just whenever I had the whenever I got that knowledge of the soul and reincarnation and all that, they all just stayed there and just looked they never got close to me before this i had experiences where i had like more night nightmares or like things actually try to approach me or touch me right but after i gained that knowledge I, you know i say that god allowed me to see it they just they never get close to me anymore and they just stay stay there and they and they just look and it's so strange so strange for example just the other night i think it was two weeks now two weeks ago i was sleeping and i, I always wake up when I, something's gonna get near right i i'm not i'm not even as like i wake up I, and i saw this like freaking snake come in but it's so often now that i wake up and i see things that i tend to ignore it since it doesn't get close to me well it ends up being that i wake up again and this freaking snake just stands up and uh, from the inside of it just starts coming out this freaking woman. And then from the chest of this woman, freaking br brings out like a red stone. And I was like, whoa, what, what am I seeing? And I, I remember I immediately woke up, like I stood up, I turned on the light and I... Uh, I was holding in my hand my sandal, like I was going to hit it or something with my sandal. I was like, what is this thing that I just saw? And uh, but, but yeah, they don't get close to me. They just appear and these weird things, just very weird things. Yeah. Yo, Parsi, go ahead, bro. You're closing. Hey Astro, sorry. Um, I don't know if anyone was calling me previously, but I'm kind of between work at the moment, so apologies if I don't answer. I've had a um, I've had a couple of sleep paralysis experiences that I can actually remember vividly. One was um, I think in my twenties, I um, woke up and I saw what I can now describe as a 
a hybrid child, a gray hybrid child. And I had the sense that it was female and it was crouching down. It was very tall, looking at me from the side and it had wispy hair. It was probably one of the most frightening experiences in my life. Um, I had to literally pray in my mind that it goes away. Um, But it eventually did. Um, It's the worst feeling to have because you can't move your body. I don't know if anyone's ever had that experience before. Well, I want to say this. Uh, I used to have that type of, uh, when you wake up, you can't move a lot. I had this one dream where it, it lasted multiple times. It was like I woke up and I couldn't move and it just looked differently. It just, the colors of the room were different. And I, every single time I went, I tried to wake up again, I woke up like in a different place and then the day went on and then I tried to wake up again. It was just repeating and repeating and repeating to the point where I thought I was going to lose my mind, right? And then uh, out of the blue, out of, out of the blue, I remember that I was I got so desperate because I couldn't move my body, I couldn't I couldn't sit up or anything, and I remember that something took over, and I just like put my, my hand forward, and then these little lines of different colors popped out of like out of nowhere. I remember this. And then somehow just touch a couple lines, those lines of different colors, and then I was able to move my body again and wake up where I am now, right? Like in this reality. And, and uh, since then, I don't have that where I, where I wake up and I'm unable to move. Uh, but, but yeah, I just want to share that because that, that used to happen to me a lot until that, until that point. Go ahead, G. I'm sorry. Did you did you say go ahead, G? Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. It's my first time hosting. (laughs) Sorry, I mean co-hosting. I'm very nervous. Go ahead. Thanks. Hi, guys. Um, I was actually just popped up to uh, talk about the target, but I am enjoying the conversation. Um, It is very interesting i have also had sleep paralysis um i've had very um vivid dreams uh dreams that seemed like they were more like ancient memories um i've had attacks um during dreams um and also i think that i get sometimes like um like not necessarily uh, on a great landscape, but, you know, vision-type dreams as well. So, really enjoying that conversation. Um, However, I just wanted to talk about the target really quick, because I thought that um, when I saw it, I was just... To me, it's more um, of a practice, um, I guess, to, like... uh, self reassurement <laughs> or something like that. Like it's it's actually for myself to just verify that um the things that I see, the you know, sometimes the things that I sense that I'm actually connecting with it. So that's why um I actually participate and I love um every week being able to uh count on Astral to hold the spaces. So thank you so much. I just wanted to indicate, I'm sorry, um, I just wanted to indicate that I was getting a repetitive image of rows, lines, or stripes, and I do see that, like, um, within what it seems like is, um, like, um, uh, like a deck or a pier or something like that, um, I, I, so it was really funny because one of the last images that I had, I actually saw something white. I didn't know exactly what it was. I thought possibly it could be clouds within the lines. But I did get a lot of uh, hits on this target. Um, I did um, write looking out, rows or stripes, a darker base or lower, and water. And then I indicated my repetitive image was rows, lines, or stripes. Um, 
at the top, up on the right hand side, I what I saw was like something possibly like um like a, a, a like a stick or a log or something like that. And I, it actually looked like uh, I was looking from under the water, looking up. And I'm not very good at drawing, but I tried to draw how the water um, looked around the log, you know, where the log was in there. And um, so I felt also I was uh, drawing in the center, and I wasn't really sure what I was drawing, but I saw the little lines. Uh, which could be possibly prank, uh, planks um, with uh, oh, like something sticking out. And I was just thinking to myself, is somebody smoking from a bong or something? <laughs> that I'm, I'm connecting to it, but it actually, no. I can Sorry. see. <laughs> so actually, I can actually see that it would resemble uh, something like, you know, an actual deck or something like that. And I did have like a little tiny shape on the right side. And now that I look at it, you know, I didn't know what I was drawing, but it kind of is like in the shape of a fish. <laughs> so I felt very connected to this. And thank you for holding the space. That's great, G. Thank you very much. Love always. And the most veteran remote viewer <laughs> who has come up, I always appreciate uh your take on it. Quaz, what's up? And if anybody else wants to, yeah, to uh, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. How you doing, everyone? Yeah, I was on my walk when I had the phone in the pocket, and I said, well, what am I hearing here? I'm hearing somebody that was uh, having a sleep paralysis issues. And uh, talk about astral projection, and also, oh my God, yeah, yeah, this is a, something I know a bit about because when you know, when I had my sleep paralysis, you know, I know it's frightening, you know, because it's it's like you can't move, and there's like something on you. It's like you're in a vacuum. I mean, it's a terrifying feeling. It's like a a presence of like a blackness, like you feel like you're in a black hole. I know what that's like many times, and I always try to fight it, right? Your, your, your arms just got to, <clears throat> you're fighting it off, right? It happens several times until you just get so fed up of that feeling. I said, it's, it's de debilitating. You can't sleep like this. So what you do is you just, you got to be willing to die. You've got to be willing to say to yourself, I don't care if this shit kills me. I'm just going to let go. So it's not a kind of a will yourself or, or a surrender at the same time, but you just, it, when you let go, you start to feel that presence that um, it, you, you start to vibrate. And somebody mentioned the white light, right? I mean, when that vibration builds in you, you actually become this light. And you, uh, well, in my experience, I uh, let go and I let this surrender go into the light and becoming light. And before you know it, it was a terrifying, like, okay, listen, like, it's like you had all the elements all together in an electromagnetic field. You feel all the fire, you feel elements of air, water and earth like earthquake imagine all the most terrifying rumblings you can imagine that's why it's so frightening and people you know when they get that feeling you know they resist and they they wake up and say what was that nightmare right but i took it a bit out and then i realized i was in a, a realm of spheres there, there was colored there was maybe about Oh, about seven or eight. I don't know. I, they were different colors, but they were vibrating and playing this. Each one was playing frequencies. It had, was, had a part of a orchestral, electronic, whatever you wish, right? And then, <laughs> you know how you have that flash that, oh, yeah, I've done this so many times before. I said, yeah, this was the uh, reincarnation trap. And then you, when, you, when you realize that this was all illusion and you go past that veil, what you're going to find is, you know, you're, you're going to be shocked to realize that, you, you know, the Almighty, 
but that you consider God your creator. Uh, we weren't created that way. We were created by these pe um, um, aliens that were crashed on Earth, and you know, you know these stories that happen on resets about reptilians. You know, well, our creators are are um, hybrid. We are hybrid reptilians, actually. Is what you're going to realize now. Now that's a darkness, but wait, there's there's some hope in that because these reptilians that are controlling us and you know imagine the matrix. I mean, this is what you realize when you step out of the matrix. When you step out of the illusion of the astral, when you get past all of that, you realize that we were <laughs> we were made <laughs> by reptiles, but they have a they were you know why they hate us so much and put so much of this misery and. Mm -hmm. All this misery and trauma on us all. Drop, uh, it, drop it to us real quick. Go ahead. Give it to Okay. Us. The good news is they did not expect that th they were going to create souls. That's why they're so jealous of us. And they, their time is up, and they're going to realize the, uh, we, are, we are the immortals, and we're going to have a thousand years of peace. Out. I'll land right there and let you consider that for now. Thank you for letting me up here. Thank you, Quaz. Hey, um, would it surprise you to know that I was one in a past life from Alpha Draconis? That I saw my life flashing before my eyes during my regression? That I saw my hands change from human to reptilian? That I saw them feeding on humans? Um, that the being named itself, uh, the being told me the name was Ruck, R-A-K-K-A-H, from Alpha Draconis. Uh, the being's eyes showed up every time I closed my eyes. Um, I ended up drawing the face of the being. They ended up speaking to me. So I had, for the longest time, this reptilian attachment because of this past life that hopefully I'm able to let go now. But you are on the so I'm not crazy because every present. time I try to speak of this, it turns into a train wreck, and I'm crazy, and I go off. I said, "Damn, that I shouldn't have said shit about anything." <laughs> no, that's okay. This is a yeah. Safe you're in the right place. Speak. I can see. Yeah, I can see our friend. Chris so I wonder Chris, sometimes, you, you know, what am I half hybrid reptilian? Am I more reptilian or? But, you know, the Almighty is, uh, we, we are attached to the Almighty. We just have to get past the veils of these tricksters that are controlling our matrix, right? So I don't fear them anymore, these little reptilian people, you know. I said, well, you know, if you're going to do your thing, do your worst, because I have nothing else to lose. I'm at end of life, right? I'm, I'm, uh, uh, taking on um, being a caregiver for my 93 year old mom right and i'm in my mid 60s and my health is starting to fail because i'm giving all my life force to her while she just keeps on going so i'll land there and let you speak about reptiles because nobody know nobody you don't think i'm all crazy right i'm a train wreck <laughs> Absolutely not, my friend. Absolutely not. That's that's what this space is for. So for all of us to speak, Chris, I'm so happy you made it, brother. Well, for You're some people why... that didn't do all this astral thing, and they're going to find out in the astral way, man, they're going to be in for some big trauma, right? And to come out bluntly and say it the way I did, it was so on. I'm not a very good speaker, right? Because when I was growing up, I was cloistered because my mom, sister was in the convent of Carmelites, and she thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to put my son into Carmelite. They've become so enlightened. Yeah, yeah. I had no social life, and I wasn't able to, 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 to learn my lessons in school because I was on another layer of perception was I was forced to accordion lessons and had to practice three hours a day to earn some stupid trophies. So I had a trophy, Mom. So I have to, had that to deal with. Thank you so much, Klaas. Christian, would you like to come join us to speak? 
Hey, Parsi, uh, Astral. Thank you guys for uh, having me. I'm actually at work right now. I'm just on break, but I just wanted to pop in and, and say, uh, Parsi, I'm so happy that you're you're out here sharing the uh, story. Uh, the disclosure is going to come from the experiencer, guys. Um, we have to support our experiencers because they're the ones that are going to relay the message uh, from the phenomena to us. We have to destigmatize this. Uh, I was so happy to hear Quaz speaking there. Uh, brother, you're not crazy. Keep telling your story. Uh, we have to destigmatize this because people are suffering. Uh, our experiencers need the validation from the community. We, we can't be dismissing them. We have to support them 100%. And I'm just really happy to be here supporting you guys. Uh, and Parsi, so happy to see you in co-host spot there, man. Keep going. Uh, love yous all. Uh, I have to get back to work, though. Thank you for letting me up. Thanks, Chris. Looking forward to the next space, buddy. Appreciate you. Who's next? Who'd like to say something? Anyone want to come up and speak? I feel like I've just found my voice. G, go ahead. Hello. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that I think that well, that there's probably like um, that there are. I think that everybody has like a different experience. It might not be exactly the same as other people. Um. And I think that that's okay. Um, I think that we probably all have different stories. And, you know, it's okay. It's okay if someone else's story is not exactly like yours. It doesn't invalidate it or anything like that. Um, I think that it's um, coming together, being able to uh, combine all the stories is where or experiences is where we can come together um, to have that type of disclosure. Um, so I just wanted to really quickly say that I personally um, have been tied to what I consider religion uh, since I was a very young. Um, I ch chose my own religion and I started seeing um, what I now understand is like the black hat man um, as a very young uh, child. And that actually happened right about the same time that I actually chose my own religion. And so it has always followed me through that. And um, I was having a lot of sleep paralysis, but I actually just came to the point to where the only way that it would I was able to start to break out of it was when I would just, you know, within myself, within that space, consciously being able to just pray my way out of it. And um, I'm on the phone right now, but sorry. <laughs> but um, so. And once that I found that that started to work was that I was able to continue doing that and it started occurring less and less and less. So for myself, um, you know, directly calling out to God um, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that worked for me. But as I indicated, um, that has always been with me. Um, and that's always been like my foundation. So um, it did help me a lot though. Um, also, um, I just wanted to state that I actually wanted to talk about this, but I hadn't found the right place because, you know, I do live with other people in the house. But um, it was probably about a week ago that I had um, uh, what I thought was like a really bad dream, but. It woke me up, and I woke up, and I was scared. And it felt like um, something in my dream had, um, it had actually come, and it was like a big bump with, uh, it was like, um, with, like when somebody, you know, comes down on the ground and bumps, like with their arm hitting hard, and... Um, I could feel like that it was over, like what I would call on the other side of the ceiling. 
and um, it was almost like an invisible or an invisible or translucent layer. Um, and when I um, started thinking back about it, I started thinking that what what was that? Like the, the it was like a like almost like a man, um, but it was very large. Um, could have been about ten feet tall, but it was just very large and strong. And um, it had something like um, a type of maybe what I thought may have been a cape. But when I started looking for images that would match that, I saw that there were, um, you know, like men in armor or possibly like, you know, wings. I'm not sure. It was just a very strong um, came down and um, was hitting to try to get through. But what I associated that with was that when I had my near-death experience, when I died, um, I always uh, associate the ceiling because when I went up out of the operating room, when I reached the ceiling, it was gone. And that's when I went into the different dimension to where uh, my soul was traveling. So when I thought back about... Um, how it was like a translucent layer that that you know person or thing was trying to get at me um that i i immediately like realized that it was in a different dimension but that it couldn't get through that dimension to me like on earth and the feeling that i received was that it was someone that i knew um, and, and that they had found me. And so it was like almost like a nightmare, but it was like real. And so that was like a really strange, I saw that Taylor, <laughs> um, had left. And so I was going to ask him about that, but I just wanted to share that, um, because it was really strange, but it was really real. And, um, so the, it felt. Yep. What you're describing is, it sounds like someone from the Irma uh, they're usually especially on their hinds they're, they're about 10 feet tall they're all really strong um, imagine a feline person just like that they walk on their back feet uh, they're really strong they're like the best uh, warriors in, in the universe um, and so and yeah they dress very finely I've seen a lot of them in robes and cloaks and capes even they're very think of it's like they're very very uh unique uniquely dressed all of them they're all very meticulous about the way they dress and it, it i mean they're very loving towards humans think of a cat so like everything about them like naturally they come well dressed well very clean and well put, put together and you're talking about the types that are like, I mean, and especially if you're getting the strength, you know, it may have been a leonine species, like the lion, the half lion ones. Those are the biggest ones and the strongest, I would think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. But the Irma are, the, I think, one of the largest species in the universe, and they are impossible to meet in open battle. They're like, it's just stupid. Like, no species in existence is willing to meet the Irma in the open battle at suicide. Yes, I mean, what you're describing is exactly what it was like, um, like, almost like a, a warrior or something that would be covered, like, in armor. But what you're describing, I don't, and you probably don't remember, but the first time that I spoke to you that I... I um I asked you about was when I was a child that a lion appeared to me but that it did not like I was just feet away from it in Texas and um you know I think I was about eight and it did not pounce on me or I just slowly walked away from it and it just kept staring at me directly into my eyes. And that was prior to my near-death experience. 
And then shortly after that was when there were like a pack of wolves where we, we don't have wolves in Texas. Um, but the lion has always been um, the one constant thing in my life. So that is um, funny that it, you know, it kind of ties it all in together. But I would be interested about in hearing a little bit more about it if you have the time. Hey, G and Taylor, I'm, I'm, I'm quite shocked that you guys are mentioning beings in armor, um, tall beings, because that's exactly the kind of beings that I'm in, in contact with through my regressions and currently. So these beings, they're manifesting with, and um, I asked AI to kind of conjure up what's coming in my mind's eye. So if you look at my profile picture, those, that's what the beings look like. They they have the faces of owls, but they have the bodies of men, and they're warriors. Um, they dress in a golden armor, and they have these weapons that are, um, it's hard to explain, it's an energy weapon, but it's more like a, it's a, it's a hybrid between a sword and a spear, and they carry it with them everywhere. Um, and they, they don't have a name for themselves every time I've asked them for a name, but they've said that they call themselves the guardians of souls or the keepers of souls. Um, and they reside on this astral realm. So it's funny how now more and more people are kind of, uh, it seems like they, they tend to show themselves as certain animals to certain people. I don't know if that's the lion is your spirit animal, but for me, the owl synchronicities kind of started just after my, uh, my first regression trying to get rid of the reptilian attachment and doing these um self-healing meditations from dr dr joe dispenza i don't know if you've heard about him um and then through those meditations these owl beings started showing up um their faces started showing up um i was able to draw them very roughly because i'm bad at drawing an illustration but then they they kind of came through that regression and after that regression the contact with these beings has just exploded now. So it's, it's very, I'm very curious how um, you also describe them as being tall and in, in an ar armor. Same with you, Taylor. Uh, Taylor, if you can you expand on that perhaps? Have you ever heard of um, these type of beings? Yeah, uh, and I was going to say too, the Irma are also known for their like armor. It's, a, it's like the baddest ass in, you know, in existence. Like, uh, these beings that you're talking about, Parsi, it sounds like, uh, well, just one of those groups that's ascended to this height of, like, spiritual transcendency, and they probably go around helping um, species like ours, because th apparently that's really a big deal right now out in the cosmos, is that Earth is like about to we're about to like evolve or whatever uh advance we're about to go advanced we're about to do yeah. something bro <laughs> yeah <totally. laughs> they don't know yet but they're trying to direct yeah. us in the right direction so a lot of so yeah you're, we're getting a lot of those groups that are like really spiritually advanced and they're like hey, you know it's gonna be okay like we're here for you and all this kind of stuff and that's good some people are having way worse experiences with them uh, some people are, are traumatized by it. I'm, I'm just not one that, that was. I, you know, saw the opportunity. It uh, was kind of like in A Beautiful Mind where the Ed Harris was just like following him around at the end of the movie. I, I told my Ed Harris, could you make me some money? And he, and he, he was like, yeah, yeah. So that that's good, you know. Um, just like be really careful about communicating with beings you can't actually see uh sometimes and especially if they're sh appearing in threes there is something about beings who appear to you in threes that you can't trust so if you are talking to them and you can tell that there are three parsi just stop listening or like get get rid of them like do whatever you do for protection just don't let them come, like, there is, uh, there is, all religions apply when it comes to talking the other side, or, or like, uh, eat, <clears throat> talking to advanced beings, like, telepathically, 
you just have to be careful. It's not necessarily like, and it sounds like you're protected. It feels like you are. You're good. Um, at the same time, there are a lot of advanced species just like the ones you're describing. And uh, they do. It's like they have greater knowledge than you do. You know, listen to hear them out. Like, they may have a downwind. What, what advanced beings from, like, several different species have told me, if I, you know, if I actually talk to them, <laughs> um, is that the entire universe, like, there's not another time that, and this is crazy because it all applies at once, but try to stay with me. They believe in God like the creator of existence like all advanced species have had some kind of miraculous encounter they believe that christ was the only believed time in existential history that god was said to manifest in carbon-based form that makes all of humanity very sacred because i uh, to to advanced species because the percentage and I could have this wrong but the percentage of like Christian and non-Christian aliens is the same per capita as it is on earth I mean I, I have that like if that if that's so then it's like that's no it sounds no fun but it's like I've been I, I've been like trying to plug all this in and like disprove it and I can't so it's like being virtuous apparently in eternal existence because they all know how to live forever is even more important so it's like things like keeping your word if you give your word to something and in a thousand years it comes true if you're still alive it's kind it's kind of matters a little more you know so it's like being the, these extremely virtuous people is what, before we, be, before we become spacefaring, that's what we have to be. Yeah, now you're absolutely on the money because these beings, they took me to see God. They call it the all. Um, um, <clears throat> they told me about their agenda, how they're fighting against other species in this realm we call the astral realm. So things that you say are very much resonating with me. Now, when you spoke about Christ manifesting as God, there is a book called The Thea Uba Prophecy by a gentleman by the name of Michel de Marquet. Michel was a Frenchman living in Canberra in Australia. I don't know if anyone's heard about it, but his book really resonated with me. He spoke of a race of these golden beings that um, physically abducted him and took him to their planet. They, they told him how the universe started was the supreme consciousness wanted to experience life in every form so the supreme consciousness decided to put itself out there in different life forms give itself free free will so it can experience these lives over and over again um, in the book he even speaks about how jesus and christ were two separate beings um, i think if i'm not mistaken jesus was the biological son that was born but it was Christ as the NHI that they replaced him with. That was the one that was able to perform miracles, quote unquote. Um, and that he actually saw the body of Christ after it was taken from the planet, after he was crucified. I mean, take from it what you will, but it, the book deeply resonated with me. And, and that's what these beings told me as well, is that we're all fractals of source. These are the exact words they said to me. And then I read this book. And the book talks about a supreme consciousness going out throughout the universe. Um, so for me, in my humble opinion, it all boils down to our ability to connect with this higher consciousness. And that's what's happening right now is that we're connecting with parts of this supreme consciousness in other life forms because we're reaching that level. And soon we're going to have that official confirmation. I think few days ago there was some kind of uh, articles out there that some UK scientist is now about to announce they found life on Trappist 1b but I think Linda Moulton Howe even spoke about this from one of her insiders that they already knew about the life being on Trappist 1b and there is another whistleblower by the name of JP military guy 
that comes to Dr. Sala, Michael Sala's channel. I mean, Michael Sala's had a few questionable guests, but I don't get that feeling from JP. I, I find that I resonate with JP. Um, and JP pretty much says the same thing as well, is that um, things are about to happen. And not only Trappist-1b, but even Ganymede, which is one of the uh, moons of Jupiter. So take, take from it what you will, whatever resonates. Yeah, I hear you. Let me let me wrap up about the three beings. If you're ever communicating with something you can't see telepathically, and you can tell there are three separate beings, get rid of them. Stop talking to them. There's there's a thing called jinn. That's all I know to call them. They're real, and they each, all three, have their own separate ego, and so they all want credit for their own mischief. You will always be able to tell when there's three, and there will always be three if it's Jen. Even if it's women, get rid of them. The beings that I see are usually just one or two up in the sky, and they actually move with purpose. They don't fly by really fast. I've only seen the flybys extremely fast with my own eyes, quicker than I could pull up my phone to record them. But every time they actually show... Um, it's with intent and in intelligence, and it's either one or two. Um, and sometimes they'll play around. So if, if in my mind I say, can you go right or left, they will do that. They'll cross each other. Um, they, they tend to be really playful, and they don't really directly impact me. They're always in the background, and that's what they've told me as well, is that we work in the background. We send the messages out. It's up to you to uh, spread the message and see if people will resonate and so you do you, I don't know how. you know the prime directive on Star Trek? It's no, I was no, told I, uh, I was told it is a direct channel. Like they that's their prime directive is they are not to interfere in a species evolution until a certain point of its evolution. And like we almost didn't make it somehow. But mm. I sense that we did, just barely. Well, I don't know if anybody else out there feels it. It's like a feeling in my gut that sooner or later, one of these days, something is going to happen. Um, like they've been dropping these little bombs with Jason Sands and this Kona Blue document. And uh, Kona Blue, you know, I'm sure there was a, there is probably a reverse engineering program right now, but why we, we need to question ourselves, why did they release that information? Is it just to see how we're going to react as a species to this? To see how people, if people are going to go through that ontological shock? And I think that's what Lou Elizondo alludes to, is that we're going to find out that it's not just that we're not top of the food chain, it's that we may not actually be in control of this reality. Yeah, so if you look at time as though like past, present, and future are happening on top of each other and all at the same time, it's like everything is happening all at once. You can, and I know that's hard to just like up and make yourself think sometimes, but it's like if you think of it in terms of everything's happening, there is no past, there is no future, there is only the present. And, it, and past and future are happening in the present too. If you can wrap your head around that, you kind of understand how uh, some of these beings think and it's like why they would be here. Um, the thing that stood out to me uh, about some of the things I've heard is just uh, they're apparently, you know, it doesn't matter like how many species there are. It's like the, the closest ones to us I know are, are serious Pleiades and Arcturus. And they just happen to be allied, so yeehaw. But it's like even to them, humans are considered sacred. God didn't manifest among them, if that makes sense. And it was like there was the whole thing about there was an artificial insemination. There were a lot of species with the technology to do that at the time, and they say it wasn't them. And it's like, and that was the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for that. Some thoughts to ponder. Would anyone else like to speak?
Yeah, it's all good. I'm going to keep it open for about 10 or 15 more minutes. Love the discussion. Thanks, everybody, for popping up and talking about the remote viewing. Uh, Parsi, man, phenomenal co-host. So <laughs> appreciate you, man. Help me out, dude. Thank you, Astro. It's the first time, hopefully not the last. It's awesome. <laughs> I just want, I posted a uh, poll up above whether, uh, you know, I think Jason Sands coming out. I'm just so interested in, in that story in how it's rolled out in the past couple of weeks because he's not only been a very credible, as far as we know, uh, whistleblower, but he's also had a personal experience within the topic. And I think it's, it's, it's tough for people to take like both of those together. Um, and that he's had a, uh, not only an experience with being, but with non-human intelligence and, and it just seems a little bit deeper. Um, and I think that's, these are going to be the tough things that are going to be, uh, you know, problems for people to accept is that, you know, these people have had experiences that are getting closer to the topic and this personal exploration that I was talking about. And, you know, there's an aspect of this that, you know, I think are, are, are fearful, uh, when people start to experience, you know, you come into these spaces and you hear about these experiences and it's not all the best type of stuff, but, um, you know, I think there is a very big aspect of personal exploration that, that does go behind this. Yeah, those deep meditations yeah. like Parsi, those are good. Yeah, I'm doing those. Um, I'm doing the um, Joe Dispenza's Walk for the World meditation. You can download it from his website, but you can even see it on YouTube. But I would, I would caution people that if you're doing this meditation, do it in a safe space because it's obviously a walking meditation. You don't want crazy people around you. Um, you can even do it out on your balcony. You don't actually have to walk. Um, you can just stand there and do it. But I guarantee you, once you get into that meditation, it takes you to another dimension. Highly recommend it. Would you say that's the key? I feel like meditation is, in a sense, the key, uh, a lot of the key to this, of being able to just, you know, start in a, a dedicated, consistent way of, of practicing and getting to a state. First, you, you just have to believe that someone can think to you, you can know what they're thinking, and you can think to them, and they can know what you're thinking. And you start from, I mean, it's just uh, it's a matter of faith. Yeah, I started meditating about a year ago, and then um, I heard about Dr. Greer in CE5, and I was curious about it. I, I, I never thought I could do it, but um, I found a curious seven-minute video on someone on a YouTube channel randomly, and the man was just speaking, saying, if you want to connect with beings, you have to show that pure intention. You have to show that love, and they'll show. And at first, I thought it was just a weird, maybe like a drone or something, but it's literally exploded. I mean, I've seen blue Tic Tacs. I've seen orange orbs with the faces of greys in them. I can't even explain to you the other part of the phenomenon that I've experienced through meditation. Is um, cer certain days, so they only seem to appear on clear skies. Or maybe they're just up in the atmosphere and you can't see them because of the cloud formations. So there was a night, I can remember, where the clouds were forming and Maybe it's Paraloia or Paradoia, whatever you call it. I started seeing the face of, faces of gray aliens forming in the clouds. So I would see the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So I was really compelled to start taking photographs of those. Now, the funny thing is, every time the orbs have showed up or the craft have showed up, um, helicopter surveillance has followed. And this is something that's never happened to me. It doesn't happen here in Melbourne, but I've actually documented um, black helicopters flying by. But now on this night when it was cloudy and I was meditating, obviously I couldn't see any of the beings, but their face formed in the I took their pictures and literally five minutes later, there's a helicopter with the light shining right in my face. So I live in an apartment building. So it's flying straight towards me. I pull out my phone and I start recording the helicopter. When they realize I'm recording, the lights off. So I, I have no way to explain that. And I don't think it's, it's meditation per se. It's the ability of meditation to put you in a, uh, what I coin as a brain-heart coherent state. And I think if you practice meditation long enough, maybe like a year or so, you can do that pretty much 
flow. Like you can put yourself in that state um, in a matter of minutes. And I proved that to myself yesterday when I was on a space with Christian and we manifested uh, the phenomenon live on the space. Um, I filmed the phenomenon while it was happening. It was the most intense um, orb that I've ever seen, closest orb that I've ever seen. And I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Christian's in South Carolina, I think. And he says that he sees an orb as well. Now, another gentleman that was living in Melbourne said the same thing as he's looking towards Orion's belt and he can see a flash. And then a few minutes later, I can see a flash. So this is a really interesting experiment that I think we should consider doing on spaces is to have a space where you have a, um, I would say like a global CE5. It would be hard to uh, coordinate, but I think it's something... Oh, you should really give a thought to this was just an impromptu thing and it was the craziest experience that I've had so far uh, I was just going to say that engaging your heart with meditation is like giving your brain more access to your body's intelligence yeah the only way I can describe brain heart coherence is um your heart, my heart rate slows down. I can feel my energy in my hands, so my hands start tingling. Um, and um, my brain almost feels like if you're on, um, if you're on drugs or DMT or something like that, where you're really kind of, your, your brain's kind of cloudy, but you're aware. It's hard to explain it. Uh, but the whole system, the whole body kind of slows down. Uh, and then you can literally hear them in your mind. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll say like, you know, will you give me permission to film you if you if you show up? And the message won't come in the center of my head. It'll come in the back of my head and it, it'll be like, look up. Or the message will come on the right side or the left side where my ear is. It'll just say, look up. And when I look up, um, I feel shivers running through my body because I'm literally connecting with these beings. I'm looking up at them and they're flying with purpose, with intent and intelligence. You'll see them slow down for you. Um, very hard to explain, but um, it uh, it's it's kind of hard for me to. Some people say don't encourage CE5 because you don't know what kind of entities are out there. But I think if you do your energy work, um, you can definitely uh, be in contact with these benevolent beings. Um, and that that's pretty much it for me. So thank you, everyone. Yo, I'm motivated, dude. I'm. I'm uh I'm ready to do a group C five. <laughs> I've been wanting to actually do it on the space for a while. It, and um there's a email chain which I'm a part of, uh which is called E T Contact Home, maybe. It's Costa. Do you know who that is? Uh but there's uh, somebody who puts together a worldwide group where they do a coordinated C E five basically every month. Um but I, I'm I'm so down for something like that. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody's sort of documenting their experiences. I think that would be super fucking cool. Yeah, Astro. Um, I know Delphi, you're next. But I just noticed Nonaz has come in this space. Now, Nonaz is going to corroborate the story from last night where he witnessed his version of um, the phenomenon on the same space. But go Delphi, you're first, please. So I mean, that bit was it for Delphi or was it for myself, mate? No, no. Let's let's get Delphi to go first because they were first. Please, if that's okay. Delphi, please go. Hi, everybody. Uh, nobody is my name because I'm a French anonymous. Um. Thanks a lot for your great and uh, very interesting uh, space because uh, I am abducted with um, in 2012. 2012. In 2012, I was seen by what is beyond my understanding like a triangle that appeared above my head, right? Could I share an information about 
Yo, American Space Force is in contact with non-human intelligence. Nobody is my name and nobody knows. Space Force, American Space Force is in contact with non-human intelligence. Right. Uh, could I ask you a question about uh, the abductee, the abduction, and post-traumatic stress? Absolutely. Go ahead. Especially uh, the collective psychic depression. Uh, the psychic depression isn't uh, the, a classic depression. Uh, the psychic depression is uh, like the labor of the birth of a child of your newest avatar. Um, in my opinion, uh, since I was seen by what is beyond my understanding, like uh, this triangle that appear uh, above my head. Uh, in uh, my point of view is uh, we are actually playing your own avatar on Earth. And um, I will share you an information. You, everybody, um, Everybody, uh, we, we are bilateral arthropod plants. Leonardo da Vinci um, um, made a, a paint uh, of uh, if uh, you, you are seeing the painting uh, of Leonardo da Vinci, um, raise my point of view, we are bilateral arthropod plants, right? Um, I would uh, share another, another information um, with the global post-traumatic stress, especially this collective, collective global psychic depression as humanity's reaction to all these current up evils, poverty, misery, tyranny, war, epidemic, um, and uh, the silence of the who world health organization and uh, all the government on the earth um, it uh, uh, it's it's coming it's the beginning of a global collective psychic depression right uh, namaste uh. <clears throat> god bless you god bless america god bless humanity namaste everybody that's fascinating. I think especially the part in which non-human intelligence is already in contact with our space force. <laughs> I think a lot of people would find that interesting. Thank you very much. Um, Known, how's it going, man? Thanks for that, uh, Delphi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is morning. Uh, well, actually, no, it's afternoon. Um, I'm still in morning state. Um, yeah, I can confirm with um, a Parsi regarding the other night uh, saying that... Um, uh, first for myself, I started to see, um, Parsi was uh, uh, observing, and I ran out um, hoping to get a photo of it, but uh, that didn't occur. Um, I first saw one coming through the Southern Cross. Um, so I first saw that one, and I was following that, and it disappeared on me. And then um, knowing where Parsi was observing, which was at Ryan's belt, I started observing that way, having the camera ready. Um, to take a shot. I couldn't get anything. And as soon as I put the camera down, <laughs> that's what was a strange part, I put the camera down, and I saw it light up and then disappear as quick as it lit up. It just went. Um, 
and then as Parsi mentioned, um, he saw the flesh as well, so it was that quick flesh. Um, I see them uh, constantly. Um, I don't just see them out there. I see orbs um, all around me. And the three main colours that I actually see is blue, red and white. Um, and I do get the occasional um, golden and orange. And for the past few, look, if I say the past few days, I'll be incorrect because it's a lot longer, but past few days there's been this white flash just at the corner of my eye, which I keep saying left side. <coughs> The uh, reason I actually jumped here um, as well is because it was Parsi. For some reason, I, um, I was being drawn uh, to Parsi. I'm actually um, speaking with a friend at this moment um, on Discord. Uh, he's in South Australia. And as we're speaking, um, we're both we're feeling this energy that's building up within us, and I'm feeling it more in the chest area. Um, <clears throat> so it's a high energy. Uh, it was something regarding uh, the topic that was on regarding the uh, past. I think you were mentioning it of the Jesus being the physical and the Christ being that which occupied. Um, I will say that that is exactly how it is. Um, now I will speak my perspective and only my perspective, and it's uh, my own personal experience to that itself. Um, <clears throat> I do not consider myself as a, um, an abductee in that sense itself. I do not dismiss it whatsoever, far from it. Um, my experience is, uh, I consider myself an experiencer um, and aware of the experience that's been had in the present moment. Um, uh, I acknowledge the, uh, what we could say as a Christ consciousness and I acknowledge the Christ consciousness that occupies the uh, um, the avatar, if you like, using that term or the vessel, uh, whichever uh, terminology we want to use. This is the vessel that is being used at this moment to communicate with those who are listening. Uh, this is how I see it, and it's something that I'm very aware of. <sighs> Dull. <sighs> um, and so I jumped in here because of the energy that I was feeling. And, uh, 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 Pastor, you were mentioning that uh, when you start to receive... Um, you feel it uh, from within, uh, to the left side, your neck area and so forth. At this moment where I'm feeling this particular energy is in the chest area. Um, it starts from the point where the uh, rib cage joins in the front and it's uh, in towards the heart chakra area and there's an expansion of this chest itself. Now, I state it through a particular experience where uh, someone mentioned earlier about the past uh, in the future being um, at the same time. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I look at it a little bit different. Uh, we are in this moment which is unfolding and everything that is unfolding is, the, um, is observable as the past itself. The future is that which is observing the avatar itself or occupying the avatar. So we are the future, not the vessel itself. The vessel itself is the past itself. Um, the future is that which is occupying. We can call it as the Christ consciousness or consciousness itself. Um, the collective consciousness is awakening. It has awakened. Um, it is uh, the collective's focus at this moment with all the dramas that are occurring around them, uh, which is uh, more of an obstacle to them. And if they can detach themselves from the obstacles or the, the distractions, they are capable of acknowledging the consciousness within themselves and the collective which we all are. Um, Parsi mentioned the word the all. Uh, I can work with the word the all. I don't like many other words, but I can work with the word all, the source, uh, that which is, that which we all come from, that which we all are. There is no separation to it. The only separation is the experience that has been had. Not the experiencer. The experiencer is the all itself. Uh, when we can remove our education from ourselves, the, that which we attach ourselves to, which is what we class as um, we have something, so if we believe that we are what we have been told, we will be limiting ourselves to that which we have been told, and that will be the end of the individual, if you would like. The moment that one can remove oneself from what one has attached oneself from, one is itself that which is occupying the vessel itself. Um, 
Now, when I speak of energies, to me, the energy is exactly what we are. We are that consciousness, which is uh, consciously aware of this moment as it's unfolding. Um, there is uh, many around us, which is artificial um, intelligence, which uh, the gentleman before, Delphi, mentioned uh, that so they are... Um, in contact with, they are in contact with these entities. These entities are not for our assistance. It is assistance for the entities that have already been here for a very long time. And many of the uh, material or many of the information that is out there that has been provided regarding technology is artificial technology and it is not there for the benefit of humanity. It is for the benefit of the benevolent uh, beings that are around uh, that are looking to come into form and they cannot come into form. They can only come into form as parasites into individuals, uh, which is occurring on a constant basis. So they're trying to work out on how to um, get that uh, ben uh, that. Uh, parasites consciousness into vessels so uh, many people who we would call them possessed uh, these days if uh, if we work with that word they themselves will be occupying the um uh, the vessels uh, the people the human um the avatar uh, now they want to have their own, so this is where the artificial intelligence comes into it, the AI business is for these uh, entities to have something of their own, uh, because they cannot come here, they're coming in from, <coughs> uh, we say dimension, <coughs> the dimension itself is what we speak of, is the second dimension, uh, they never formed, they could not form, they will not form, but they are trying to come into this reality. They have manipulated a lot of what we call government. Government is a manipulation in itself, and it's the manipulation of humanity itself. When we all start to come back to this moment, and instead of focusing on what we're going to be doing or what we have done, and realize that what we are doing right this moment is pushing all those entities away from this space at this moment, and that is what is occurring as I speak. Um, no. <sighs> Uh, to understand one's own Christ consciousness is to acknowledge that one is itself that, uh, that which is experiencing the vessel and all that which is applied to the vessel itself, which is uh, what we call the human. So we are that which is experiencing the human. Um, the human does not experience the spirit. So it is spirit, if you would like, that is experiencing human at this moment. Spirit is the breath. That which we breathe is that which is experiencing the vessel. So the breath itself is spirit itself. Without the breath there is no life. And the vessel can only exist within the breath, so we have the breath of life there. Which is spirit, which is consciousness, which is Christ consciousness in itself. Um. Um. And I'll ground it at this moment. <coughs> Thank you for listening. That was very powerful. Thank you, Non. Appreciate you. Yo, I felt that. And um, I wanted to just touch on, too, uh, my first CE5 heist experience. I actually thought it was bullshit when I heard about Stephen Greer and people going out and, you know, contact UFOs and bringing them down and being able to actually make contact. But then I actually like was like, okay, I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a shot. I'll go out at least ten times and uh, document my experience. And it what it I went out a couple times on my own and saw a couple like recurring shooting stars. But it wasn't until I actually started going out with other people. And uh, I went out with my brother the first time that it ever actually happened. And we went out and saw a light. So we were just going out there and we're chilling. Uh, and I was like, Hey man, you, have you ever, you know, heard of this CE five Greer, uh, heist thing where you're contacting and brought out the app and started just playing the tones or whatever. And, uh, about 10 to 15 minutes in my brother was like, Hey man, like what's supposed to happen? Like what, what, what are you getting me into here? Like, what is this? And as soon as he said that, uh, light appeared in the sky and instead of me grabbing my phone and like recording the whole uh, scene I got my flashlight and I flashed it twice so I, I did the flashlight up in the sky twice and it flashed back at me 
at us, my my brother and I, and uh, we started going crazy, like, yo, what the, what the hell is just flashed at us? And so then I kind of composed myself and flashed back again at it, and it flashed again twice, and then kind of faded off. So uh, I I do feel like there's an aspect of response and communication that's there if you're genuinely willing to explore this. Well, then there's no yeah, absolutely. Fear. That that's the thing. They uh, like the, the, they won't contact you if you're afraid. They don't want you to hurt yourself. You know. Uh, they're not. Um, it's not that uh, they don't. They don't. They're not here to harm anyone. Um, there are those that are here to do the opposite of that, which is to harm. Um, at this moment, uh, they're only in the position of observation uh, because they're, uh, the word is not the right word, but it's the only word that I truly have, is they are waiting as well for those um, that, uh, they're waiting for those to get out of bed, if you would like. Um, and there are, there are certain individuals that have yet to get out of bed. Um, I don't want to say wake up. Um, Get out of that um, astral, bro. They got to they gotta start flying out of the body. <laughs> um, like no, it it's not. It's actually, it's not to ascend anywhere. It is to descend. We are here for a purpose. We're not here to actually move away from this to a different state. We will be shifting consciousness very soon. It is coming and it is not far away. Um, that consciousness is what is going to shift and it has already happened. It is a conscious evolution or a, an expansion of consciousness which we're getting to, which many will state it is the next dimension that we move into we are already in the fourth dimension and there are those that have come from the fifth dimension sixth dimension seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen dimension and as it goes a lot further than that itself we descend to this point of time to assist for the next phase of evolution of the human itself and the consciousness of the human uh, that is the purpose. Uh, they will not interfere at this moment because uh, there are those that need to be revealed for what they are doing. So the revealing is what is occurring. Re occurring at this moment, we call it revelations. The apocalypse is unfolding as we are speaking. And the apocalypse literally meaning to uncover, to discover, to reveal. Revelation. Dull. Um, so we are here for that purpose, but at this moment there is those, as I stated, that need to just get out of bed. It is not to go away, it is to be present, it is to be completely grounded in this present moment. It is to be embodied, it is the flesh become the word become flesh in itself and um, to acknowledge that itself is it is consciousness instead of living in the past in the mind itself to be present to acknowledge what the present truly represents in this present moment all the energies that are around us is manipulated by those um, benevolent beings that are controlling a lot of the frequencies all around us and break through those frequencies at this moment, many are just stuck in their mind. The observation of this moment itself is to observe time itself, and time itself is a memory, it is a past. When those individuals have awoken to this realization and can see it for what it is, they will acknowledge that there is no separation between us and we're all together in it. We might seem to think that we have separation, but there is no such thing as separation. It is the experience of separation that is occurring at this moment. The vessel itself is that which is, is being experienced which is separate in itself but in time itself which time itself is a whole a oneness in itself it all exists in this moment to be able to observe the second passing is to not hold on to that second that has already passed many are holding on to that second like a wave and riding the wave living in their mind in their memory the memory itself is outside of this moment anything that you can think of at this moment is not this moment it is the memory it is in the past anything that you can think of as the future is in the mind it is in the past it is a presumption it is not the present moment the present moment is the observation of time that which is observing time is not in time but is entering time we have entered time to be present to acknowledge that aspect of oneself is to acknowledge what the mind truly is. What you see is the mind at this moment. Grounding. Thank you for that. I think I almost went into a trance with your... For real? <laughs> that was good. Holy. Thank you. 
Yo, I'm going to close it up in just a couple minutes. I'll throw it around to everybody. Parsi, thank you so much for co-hosting. Taylor and Rich uh, G, everybody known for jumping up. Uh, appreciate it again. I'll let everybody, uh, you know, say their, uh, you know, last minute uh, things and then we'll close it up. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate every one of you. Stay strong. Lock Thank you. Box. No, I appreciate everyone. And known that was really great, man. I, I can confirm everything you said on a psychic level and like everything I've studied, everything I know, like astral travel wise. I can say that you're, you're pretty dead on balls there, dude. I speak with that thought, and it is the word that speaks. Think not, and the truth will be spoken. Appreciate everybody coming by. Um, the space was recorded, so if you want to listen to it, come here every Thursday and do the remote viewing. Uh, you know, thanks everybody for coming by again. Um, join in the discussion. All love. Have a great night. Peace, guys.